Ridley Scott's historical epic Napoleon is in theaters, and I have my review right now. This video is brought to you by Stamps.com. Go to Stamps.com and enter promo code MERLE for a special offer, and stay tuned after the review for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle here from New Zealand. Once again, I'm in Queenstown. This is probably the last that you're going to see me from New Zealand. I've got a thing or two left that I still banked before I left. But I wanted to get a review out of Napoleon, which looks like one of the bigger movies on this Thanksgiving Day weekend. And I have so many other movies that I haven't seen yet or haven't had a chance to review yet that you're going to be seeing in the next couple of weeks. I have a huge backlog. Don't worry. I'm going to be seeing them. I'm going to be reviewing as many of them as I can. It's going to be a lot of catch-up, a lot of charts catch-up. Uh, but I'm enjoying the last few days of the honeymoon right now. But I did want to talk about Napoleon because this looked so interesting and I took an evening to go see it at the Reading Cinema here in Queenstown, another local New Zealand movie theater that I got to go to. And, uh, well, yeah, I've got a lot to say about this movie. It's directed by Ridley Scott with a screenplay from David Scarpa, whose last film was another team-up with Scott. The quickly Christopher plummer All the Money in the World back in 2017. Joaquin Phoenix takes on the role of one of history's most famous figures, Napoleon Bonaparte, as we trace his rise from French military officer in the wake of the French Revolution to general and emperor seeking to grow France's empire worldwide in the name of peace. This version of Napoleon's story also focuses heavily on his relationship with his wife Josephine, played by Vanessa Kirby, and the likeliest talking points about the movie will probably revolve around the depiction of Napoleon and Josephine's relationship in the film, which is some combination of codependency and toxic mind games. Ridley Scott and Joaquin Phoenix are two creative forces of nature, and neither one of them have ever been afraid to take a big risk. Joaquin Phoenix in particular is a fearless actor whose unconventional style in this year's Bo is Afraid for me was the highlight of the movie, and this courage has led to constant work and an Oscar sitting on his shelf. But taking a big swing as most baseball players will tell you, which I most definitely am not, also means that you risk missing the ball entirely. And while Napoleon isn't a strikeout, it definitely isn't the home run that I think Joaquin Phoenix was going for and perhaps that Ridley Scott also had in mind. At least not entirely. From a technical standpoint, Napoleon is one of the best made films of the year. Every single dollar of its high price tag, which was funded by Apple, is on screen. And unlike Killers of the Flower Moon, where the bulk of the money seems to go into its actors' pockets, the scale and the scope of this film fits its budget. The battle sequences are beautifully photographed by cinematographer Darius Wolski, who shot Tony Scott's Crimson Tide and The Fan and began working with Ridley Scott on 2012's Prometheus. It's a perfect marriage of cinematography and visual effects that's basically seamless and some of the best depictions of combat in this era that I've seen on film. I think that Napoleon will be remembered as one of Ridley Scott's crowning technical achievements as a director, and I think the film should be a serious contender in many of the technical categories during this awards season. Narratively, Napoleon is much more muddled. Phoenix is trying something with this performance, but what that something is isn't always clear. This movie is half traditional historical epic and half iconoclastic, almost satire, looking to completely defy or spit in the face of the image of this figure of Napoleon Bonaparte that so many people have learned about throughout history. In one scene, Napoleon is a brilliant military tactician. In the next, he's a whimpering mama's boy who throws childish insults at his enemies and practically begs Josephine to validate him as the world most powerful man. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for a historical movie that plays with how we see these famous figures. You don't want to just make the same movie over and over again. But this movie goes so far one way when it decides to go bizarre or goofy or satirical that it's hard to reconcile with how straight it plays some of the other scenes. I found the crown of France in the gutter. I picked it up with the tip of my sword and cleaned it and placed it atop my own head. Joaquin Phoenix and Ridley Scott have been open in the press about Phoenix's struggle to grasp what his take on the character was going to be and the fact that Phoenix's take ultimately did reshape what this movie was. I would argue that the shape that the film took based on what Phoenix decided to do with the character 
was not the right direction for this film. It seems like a big swing that wasn't quite the right swing that Ridley Scott was either unwilling or unable to rein in when it came time to sort of modulate what Joaquin Phoenix is doing. And I have praised Joaquin Phoenix's courage and his experimental nature as an actor many times over because a lot of times it works. I just don't think that this was the right project for what he had in mind for this version of Napoleon. Vanessa Kirby's Josephine is an intriguing character for the first half of the movie, but when the history takes over, she sort of recedes into the background. I think that Phoenix and Kirby could have headlined a spectacularly gonzo satirical film about this famous couple, but it's not this movie. As historical drama goes, apart from how the battles are staged, Napoleon plays a little bit like the History Channel at double speed. We hit major milestones in his military and political career, but lose much of the context around why these events and the people involved were important. Some characters just disappear altogether. Ridley Scott has claimed that he has a longer cut of the movie that is going to be ready to stream on Apple TV+, and my guess is that a lot of those details will be filled in in that four-hour-ish cut of the movie, supposedly. Or it could be that we get many more scenes of Napoleon stomping and neighing like a horse when he wants to have sex with Josephine. Who's really to say at this point? So on one hand, we have a spectacularly realized historical epic in many ways. And on the other hand, we have a just as spectacularly noble but ultimately failed attempt at reinventing how we see Napoleon. When we average those two out, I'm putting this movie smack in the middle of it's fine and it's good. It is worth seeing, especially on the big screen, for the battle sequences, particularly in the second half. But history fans may have spent so much time rolling their eyes by the time we get to those battle sequences that they might be just a little tough to make out. So those are my thoughts on Napoleon. What did you think of the movie? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I want to thank the sponsor for this review, Stamps.com. Holiday shopping season is officially here, and it's important to keep your wish list updated. I remember one year I asked for a Blu-ray player, but no movie, so it really wasn't that useful at first. And as you're looking at this year's list, you can't be blamed for forgetting to add Stamps.com. After all, everybody makes mistakes. Stamps.com has been helping customers save time and money during the holidays for 25 years with easy access to USPS and UPS services and premium rates for all your postage needs. Why make the holidays even harder when Stamps.com can help you share the workload. It's your own personal post office. All you need is a computer and a printer, and you can leave that scale off the wish list because they will provide a postage scale for you. And with the Stamps.com mobile app, you can take care of all your orders and scheduling package pickups on the go. Stamps.com provides carrier discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates and automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. It's no wonder that Stamps.com has been an in valuable resource to small businesses for 25 years in this holiday crunch because you can get access to the USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Give your business the gift of Stamps.com so your mailing and shipping is covered this holiday season. Sign up with promo code MERLE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code MERLE. Thanks to Stamps.com for sponsoring this review, and thank you for watching it. I'll be back very soon with even more movie reviews, a catch-up on box office and charts, and movie news, including the SAG after strike and some drama that's unfolding around the ratification of that with the final deal details finally getting released later this week. So a lot on the horizon. Thank you so much to everybody that's been watching while I've been away. I'll be back in the studio next week. Until then, stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.